Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient, as you can see, who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax, and we're just going to tackle this there right here first. This is the ear that the patient was exhibiting more symptoms in. And more specifically, not only were they suffering from reduced hearing, but they're also experiencing some otalgia, so ear pain, earache and also some tinnitus. So tinnitus is a noise that um, originates with inside the ears or inside the head. So it's not an external sound that you're hearing and it can vary at the type of noise and the intensity. Most people experience it as a ringing or a buzzing noise, but they could literally be any tone or frequency. Um, some people can also experience pulsatile tinnitus. So if ever you suffer from unilateral tinnitus, a tinnitus in one ear or asymmetrical, so you have it in both ears but it's worse in one ear, and you have it daily for more than five minutes at a time, or if you experience pulsatile tinnitus, uh, it could be cardiosynchronous, so it's in line with your heartbeat, but it can also sometimes be non-cardiosynchronous, so it's not in line with your pulse or your heartbeat. These things need to be investigated further, and it can be as simple as earwax, but it could be something a bit more sinister. So do visit your GP, ENT, or audiologist for um, further diagnosis and intervention. Um, I'm just using some olive oil medical grade spray. A lot of people have contacted me actually following um, when I was on uh, on the TV the other week because I made reference to using drops on a regular basis in an attempt to potentially wash away and rinse your ear of any earwax before it forms and the question was what type of drops um, do I recommend so um, for purposes of conflict of interest I have to declare that uh, I'm a health advisor of a particular brand of drops but uh, the brand of drops that I use is called clear and it's a, I prefer the spray they also have drops but I prefer the spray within the description if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, I'm not sure if it's on Instagram or TikTok, but you will see a link to uh, our online public shop where you can purchase these drops. Um, please note we only ship to the UK. Um, if you're a specialist and you want to buy in bulk, um, our online professional shop is currently closed. We're just updating it because we're launching it with some new products, but feel free to um, email info at clearwax.co.uk and we can, we've got them in stock so we can supply that to you. But um, I prefer the spray because it's easier to use. Um, it's got a, a nozzle that fits inside the ear so you can't over insert. When you use drops, for me, it's a bit more difficult to apply. It comes out all lumpy and, and big blobs with the spray, it almost mists it. Uh, it's like a mist that's sprayed into your ear so it's more evenly distributed. And it's medical grade olive oil. Um, some olive oil drops and spray for the ear are not medical grade. And the difference is when, with medical grade olive oil, during the refinement process, there's no chemicals used um, to refine the, the high quality oil, which is then termed medical grade. Um, home olive oil, so even if it's extra virgin, there's some chemicals used in that process and there may be some impurities, hence why I prefer medical grade. Um, and as you can see, what the oil does, it helps to bind the wax together and also soften it. It also lubricates the inside of the suction probe so it prevents it from getting blocked. Um, now, if you're going to use it as a preventative measure, you, you can only really use it once your ear's been cleared of wax. So this is for people who suffer from chronic wax or also people who suffer from really dry skin in the ear. So they get um, psoriasis and itchiness in the ear. And um, you once the wax is removed, you instill the spray into your ear, so you tilt your head to one side, so the ear that you're putting it in faces the ceiling, two or three squirts in, let it sit and penetrate for a few minutes, and you'll feel it getting cold, and that moment it gets cold in your ear, it means it's, it's actually making contact with your eardrum, which is good. And then the key thing is, you've got to drain this, so you just tilt your head in the opposite direction for a few minutes with a tissue just below your ear, just to collect all the oil. So you're giving your ears a good rinse out with medical grade olive oil, as opposed to water, because water can potentially, in some people, lead to swimmer's ear, you can develop an infection, and so, and also water washes out the natural oils in the ear, so it can cause dryness and flaking and irritation of the skin, so, I much prefer to use medical grade olive oil. Um, if you've already got 
like this patient, a lot of wax. The oil will soften the wax, uh, but it can actually exacerbate your symptoms because the, the oil that you're using is going to add another lacquer of oil to, um, to make this plug bigger. So it's not going to really solve the problem. In fact, it can exacerbate it, but um, it will help to soften the wax a little bit, making it easier to move. But um, with myself, I, I just advise people not to use any drops. Only if they're really young children, I think it's worthwhile them using a few drops for a few days prior. But otherwise, um, even if the wax is rock solid, we can we can remove that. Um, we can use it a combination of instruments. Um, and also, if I need to use drops, just like I did on the right side, we can instill that during the procedure. So the right side, that was clear. There's a bit of, um, as I said, some staining, some residual wax on the eardrum. I just hovered over it. Some of it came away, just left the rest we're not going to try and be silly and too cute um, and trying to remove that because one false move we could potentially perforate the patient's eardrum so the eardrum is approximately 0 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters so it's wafer thin uh, similar to sheet or thin paper and um, so we sometimes we quit whilst your head the left side you can see it's a bit more matted um, the ear canal here is quite bendy and twisty so I've cleared the ear canal and you can see the eardrum there and that eardrum is retracted the top part of the hammer bone called the short process or lateral process it's this spherical part it's protruding outwards uh, which means the eardrum is pulled inwards so the eardrum if you think about it like a piece of cling film it's sucked inwards because the patient has got negative middle ear pressure so it's similar to when you descend on an aircraft your eardrum gets pushed inwards so it gets sucked in and gets retracted and when the eardrum is retracted, the, as I said, it's, if you imagine it being like a piece of cling film, it wraps itself around the bones. Uh, and because the hammer bone, the malleus bone, as it's also known medically, it's the first of the three bones, it pulls over the, uh, the hammer bone, in particular, uh, the short process, which is that spherical part, the top part of the bone. And we confirmed that with tympanometry, which is a pressure test. And the reason why this patient's got negative middle ear pressure, the reason why the eardrum is sucked inwards is they've got a blocked eustachian tube. They've got some nasal congestion, which has blocked the eustachian tube, which is the pressure equalizer um, of the middle ear. So it's a little tube that connects the middle ear, which is the cavity behind the eardrum to the back of the nose, the nasopharynx. Um, and its job is to equalize the air pressure. Ideally, we want the air pressure behind the eardrum to be equal to the air pressure in the atmosphere. When the air pressure is equal, either side of the eardrum, um, that's when we hear the best. That's when the eardrum is most mobile. And so we recommend some nasal decongestions just to help relieve the nasal congestion. So by treating the blocked nose, it should hopefully um, clear the, um, the, the eustachian tube and equalize the air pressure. There's a few hairs here. These are not really causing any problems. Um, I'm just... They are attached to some of the loose wax at the top. Uh, that's coating the canal. Some, if these come away as I'm bringing out some of this soft wax, brilliant. Otherwise, they're not going to cause any problems to the patient at all. And that's the retracted eardrum. You can really see that top part of the hammer bone protruding outwards. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.